all of us, um, all of us, uh, God wants us to have a life or live lives that will uh, depict who our daddy is, right? Um, unfortunately, in today's world, um, it seems as though trying to live like the world is the, has become a norm, such that dysfunction has now become uh, the, 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 the norm of the day, right? To the extent that if you're trying to do right, right seems to be a dysfunction and wrong seems to be right in this day and age. Uh, uh, but it is always important that as believers we get back to that place, um, we get back to the basics, get back to our very core and very foundation. I read my word the other day and it says that uh, my judgment shall begin in my house. Um, and that's a scary statement. That the judgment of Christ or God will begin in the house of God. Right? Um, and then I begin to think and read on and I realize that uh, those in the world are already judged. They've already been judged. Right? Um, we were judged when we were in the world. That is why we were dead in the world. And therefore, we had to be born again in Christ. All right? Uh, this life that we live truly is, a, uh, I'm tempted to call it the life of the dead. And that one day when we transition, we will experience the real life. Uh, but thank God, uh, through kingdom teaching, we get to understand that the real life is in Christ Jesus. The true life is in him. Scripture says he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him, right? Um, these things we don't get to hear and ponder on and meditate on as much as uh, our grandmothers used to. Great-grandmother's desire if they were Christian or grandmother's desire if they were Christian was to be like Christ. They would often make statements like, what would Jesus do? Right? You ask them a question and they would say, well, what would Jesus do? Always remember, what would Jesus do? If you're getting ready to do something that you're confused about, not sure of, ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Now, it is important that we, or imperative, that we get, to, we get back to that place and we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? In your own closet, when you're having uh, your own secret thoughts, uh, it is important that you ask yourself, what would Jesus do? Because truth is, uh, men will judge you based on your actions. But I am tempted to say, backed by the word of God, that God looks at your motives. Right? God is looking at your motives. So uh, Christ makes a statement like, well, uh, you guys have heard that uh, if you uh, know you shouldn't commit adultery. But I say to you, if anyone uh, lusts over someone else in their heart uh, they've already committed the very act it stands to reason that god is judging us even i mean is weighing our hearts our thoughts even right now are you with me so uh if we look at life this way last week we spoke on somebody help me eternity that's right i knew you guys remember eternity right so if you look at life from the lenses of eternity and where you want to spend eternity, these things will become more, uh, will increase in value in your sight. You become these things that seems to be valueless in the sight of people, uh, many people will now become of so much value in your sight. You would now desire to live uh, a life that is uh, pleasing. To God, your thoughts, the way you act, the way you think of other people. Uh, I mean, these things, they, it's big. It's big. And we need to actually make it as it is big. Are you with me? Uh, so we need to get to a place, a point in our lives where if people be get, I mean, at root towards us or people do things against us instead of... Uh, uh, maybe doing the same thing back, we need to get to a place where we can ask ourselves, how can I not do this thing that they did to me to somebody else? 
You get that? What if, what if we began to live life that way? Right? Like you were rude to me. And instead of reacting in that same manner, I asked myself, how can I maintain myself, keep myself such that I will not in future do the same thing to somebody else? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall. All right? So God wants us to be peace. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall. Obtain mercy. Right? So there are laws that govern these things. So if I am rude to someone else only because they were rude to me, I've, I've just now planted a seed of rudeness and it's going to allow many more people to be rude to me in the course of time. The more I show mercy, the more I activate the mercy of God for my life. You read in your word that the mercies of God is renewed every morning. And so people believe that every day the mercy of God is going to be renewed. Well, it's true. But I read also in my word where the mercy of God ceased on Saul. Are you with me? So uh, God, as sovereign as he is, as sovereign as he is, uh, is not bound. It's not bound to how we perceive him. He's unlimited. Say, my God is unlimited. Yeah, he's unlimited. That's why he blesses you in ways that you don't expect. You thought God will send a man to come knock on your door or God will, will, will touch the heart of your CEO at work or your director at work to promote you and by that promotion you will get maybe $25,000 raise and now you'll be able to uh, save enough for in five years to be able to now begin that vision that you had but God had a different plan are you with me God had a different plan and he showed up when you least expected him say my God is unlimited yeah that's the God that we serve he's unlimited in all his ways but for us to experience the fullness of God there are things that we must do and tonight I want to speak to you on how you must carry ourselves how we must ca carry ourselves as believers all right how to carry yourself as a believer in other words how to behave as a believer how to behave as a believer um in 2000 and God knows when. <laughs> but many years ago, over 10, over so many years ago, um, we were ordinary guys from different walks of life. There were some from Korea, some were Caucasian, some were Hispanic, uh, some were from uh, uh, Puerto Rico, um, some were from the Dominican Republic, Haiti, uh, from all walks of life, war had just begun. Uh, and we all came together at a place called MEPS. Doing a physical because we had all signed a contract to serve in the United States Army during war, a time of war. How crazy it was or we were to do so. But um, it was one of the best decisions that I ever made in my life. So, from different cultures, different walks of life, we were all placed in buses and we were bused to a place to receive training to become soldiers. I remember... Um, what happened within 24 hours of getting there? We got to uh, the training ground and all I could hear were voices of drill sergeants screaming at us. And if you were not careful, you would become decombobulated with all the sound and 
it was dark. We had arrived at night, and we, all we could hear were people screaming. That was new to us. No one told me there was somebody else was going to scream at me, you know. And they forced us to carry our bags. If you had three bags, you put it on top of each other and you carry it. And uh, we did push-ups and squats and all kind of crazy stuff at night. And then we were given a few hours to go to sleep. So we went to sleep, woke up the following morning. In fact, we, we, were, we were, they woke us up you know, at dawn. Turn on the light, started screaming. Give us a few minutes to go shower, get ready. How we did it, I don't even know. And then they marched all of us to a barber shop, all the men to a barber shop to get haircuts. Low me. 115 pounds at a time. All you could see was this big head and skinny body. I'm sitting in the barber chair and I'm getting ready to tell the barber what kind of haircut that I want. Want it like high and tight or something. Want it look like a soldier. I tried to open my mouth and the drill sergeant screamed and said, shut up. And we all got the same haircut. It was easy. Zip, 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 zip. Irrespective of your age, look, color of your skin, you got the same haircut. We all came out with shiny heads. And then they marched us to a place, supply. And they began to give us what we were going to wear. You didn't have a choice to choose or even tell them what your size was. They had already, they knew what size would fit you and that was what you were getting. And we're giving briefs. Who knows brief? Brief. Ladies, you know briefs? Uh-huh. Briefs. <laughs> Brown briefs. Y'all want some more details? <laughs> right? Brown briefs. They gave us t-shirts. We got our uniforms. And... We all almost look alike with the bald heads. We all almost look alike in our briefs. And slowly but surely, they made us all begin to think alike. We were from different walks of life, but now we are all in one concentrated place, concentrated place, and we're receiving the same doctrine, teaching. Right? And the goal was for us, everyone, to think alike, act alike, and be there for each other. Within weeks, we learned new languages. Right? When this, if someone screamed, after, huh, we knew what that meant. It is. We knew what that meant. But weeks before that, we didn't have any idea what that was. When we arrived, we didn't have any idea what that was. We, you, would not, you were not allowed to put on your chest the label that says U.S. Army until you passed at least the basic requirements, which also meant that you had to understand the new language that you were taught, the new things that you were taught, the new commands that you were, that were spoken to you. Are you with me? At that, at that time, you were now fit to graduate, to become a soldier. But you see, and of course, as part of the training, we were taught, we were taught on how to carry ourselves. How to speak, how to say it, how to stand, right? Uh, 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 how, to, how to even walk. You are taught all of these things such that if you are wearing a red, a red shirt at the mall and, uh, and she 
was wearing green in a mall. If you all had just graduated, I, we could tell that you were a soldier because of your mannerisms, because of the way you carried yourself, because of the way you walked, the way you talked. You were taught how to say please. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. You were taught all of these things. So by the way you spoke, by the way you acted and act, we knew who you were. We knew if you were a soldier or not. Are you with me? In that same manner, God wants his people to have a similar way of life. There were days I thought certain things were not that they were telling me was not good enough. But war on me if I chose something else besides what they were telling us to do. War on us if we decided to do something else besides what they were telling us to do. Are you with me? So, in such an environment, what we thought didn't matter. Someone say faith. What we felt didn't matter. Say faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, things not seen. So God, no one the scripture says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Is that right? All right. Now what I see tells me, don't do it. But faith tells me, believe God to be able to do it, irrespective of what it looks like. The natural looking at the ground tells me this is water. And if you cross it, it may become red because your blood is going to be spilled all over it in that water, in this sea. But faith says, use the rod in your hand. It can cause it to part. So I feel I, I'm scared. That's a feeling. I'm scared because the Egyptians are behind me and there's a sea in front of me. I'm scared because whatever is behind me and something scary is in front of me. There's an obstacle in front of me, but God is saying, even in situations like that, I want you to remember faith. Like the military, how you felt in the morning did not matter. It didn't matter. When, I, when they were giving me my first good haircut. Zip, zip, zip. I felt like they, they should give me something else. But my feelings didn't matter. Did we complain? You dare not. Did you cry? Hopefully not. Right? You had to get used to it. In that same manner, when we come to Christ, He says things like, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what happened when they bust us off to Fort Jackson or Fort Benning or wherever others went. We transformed our mind. But for that to happen, we needed faith. Someone say faith. faith. Say faith. faith. So the Christian walk, you, you, you've ever heard this thing? Someone ever say something like Christian faith. Christian faith. That's your Christian walk. Christian faith. Have you ever wondered why they would you know, even bring the word faith into that. Christian, my, what's your faith? Oh, Christ. Say, I believe God. I believe, God. I believe him. I believe and I'll follow him. I'll follow, I'll follow his lead. Are you sure? Yes. All right, let's go into the word then. Colossians 3, Amplified, verse 12. It says, clothe ye therefore, clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. 
Now, when you read the King James Version, you might think that he's talking to priests and pastors and bishops. Right? It says, put on therefore as God's elect. Well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not God's elect. Or I'm not a singer. I'm not God's elect. Are you with me? But what he's really saying is, clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones. Are you God's chosen? Are you with me? Are you really sure? Okay, let's go to First Peter. It says, you are a chosen generation. <laughs> oh, it's in your Bible too. A royal priesthood. Are you with me? A holy nation. A peculiar. That you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That sounds easy. Let's go to Amplify. Let me show you something beautiful there. But you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A dedicated nation. Say that's me. God's own purchased. You know how he purchased you? With his blood. God's own purchased. Special people. Say I'm special. My goodness. I, I want that to get into you. You know they had to force us to finally say that we are soldiers. Weeks ago we were ordinary guys. Months we were ordinary guys. But after going through the transformation we became soldiers. The way we walked, the way we sat, the way we, the way we did everything, everything changed. Hallelujah. See I'm special. So if we are truly born again then something must change. And it starts from within. Are you with me? It starts from within. Uh, oftentimes, because we've been trained for a very long time to act holy, whatever that means, or act righteous, many have found as human, as humans are, have found ways to put on a facade. Right? So we, we're constantly working on the outside. How can we let people see us in a way that they will not judge us? Ignoring what's on the inside. side. But baby, if you could be, you could be, you could be Rahab. You could be Rahab. And on the outside, be who you are. But God is looking at the inside. And he will present you with opportunities to change. If you only keep working on the inside. On the outside, she was still Rahab. On the outside, she was a prostitute. On the outside, she was known to do all these bad things. But maybe on the inside, she desired change. Maybe on the inside she desired. Maybe on the inside she would lay on her bed each time a, a new man would walk out of his room, out of her room. She would lay on her bed and say, Lord, please, this is not the life I want to live. Lord, help me. Maybe she would read a little bit of the word. That is why when she saw the spies, she was able to say to the spies, listen, I've heard of your God. I've heard. How did she hear? I've heard of how your God, you know, uh, delivered you out of Egypt. I heard of how your God was able to part the Red Sea. I've heard of how mighty your God is. So whatever your God has sent you to do, I got you. Whatever I can do to help you, I got you. I'm going to hide you here. It was a hard thing. It was a hard thing. So, men may be judging you, accusing you, or you may even be looking down on your own self, or looking at things from the outside. But this night, tonight, I want to encourage you and charge you to begin to work from the inside. The work starts from within. It starts from within. It starts from within. Scripture says, render your hearts 
and not your garments. Are you with me? Rent your heart and not your garment. Now, the good, the good news is, someone say, but prof, how about the outside? The good news is, whatever happens on the inside will come out. So, you know, like a pregnant woman, work on the inside. You know, let's get the seed inside. Don't worry. Let folk keep judging you. Let them keep saying whatever they'll say. You keep silently working on your inside. Eventually, your stomach is going to protrude. Not literally, but eventually, folk will begin to see the fruit. That's how some of y'all are trying to rub on your belly. <laughs> right? Folk will begin to see the fruit. Why? Because it started with a seed on the inside. See, I'm special. Let me finish reading this so we can get back to Colossians. So he says, you are a chosen generation, chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. Oh, this is good. Do you know, do you, do you believe you are a royal priesthood? You, so you, you know you're a priest, right? Huh? Okay. Okay, okay. Are you sure? Uh, when you read Mark chapter 16, and you don't, uh, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Jesus says this. He says to the disciples, Go ye into the world, preach my word to every creature. And then in verse 16, he says, To them that hear it and believe it shall be saved. And he that hear it and believe it not shall be damned, condemned. Now, watch this. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Say, that's me. In my name, them that believe shall cast out devils. That means the guy who just received Christ on Sunday has the opportunity if he wanted to to cast out some say I'm a priest are you with me so he says for anyone who believes I got a promise for you these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall speak with new tongues in my name they shall take up deadly serpents in my name, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. In my name, they'll become doctors. <laughs> In my name, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. See, that's me. So in First Peter, he says, you are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. You're not just a priest. You're from a royal family. The kingdom of God. My daddy is the king. Are you with me? In fact, my daddy has made my brother the king of kings. Are you with me? So you are prince, you are princess. Our daddy has made our brother, Jesus, who's our Lord, the King of Kings. I'm not even going to go there tonight. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So you are a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation. <laughs> God's own purchased people a special people that's why the enemy is after you inside of you is a nation inside of you is a nation you you, you think the enemy is after you because you have uh, a job something or uh, coming up or you have a wedding coming up or you have something good coming. no 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 
The enemy is after your great, great grandson who's about to be born out of you, who's going to change. Yeah. Moses' mom, you think the enemy is after you and your child alone? No. The enemy is after a nation called Israel that carries a promise. There's that boy, Moses, that, that, is a, that, that stands a chance of dying. Is, is only a deliverer that is going to deliver that entire nation. So inside of that young boy was a nation, the deliverance of an entire nation. That is why we cannot afford to give up throwing the towel when challenges come our way. Are you with me? And I'm not talking about you chasing money and dogs, cats, houses, uh, bags, and eyelashes, eyebrows. And uh, snakes and lions, whatever your pets are. You know, I- I'm talking about standing for Christ. I- I'm talking about desiring and pursuing all that we ought to pursue to be like Him in your own poquito way. I know you want to make a big change, I know you want to change the world, but it starts with us. The change that we want to see begins with us. And it often begins on the inside. You keep looking outside and you may never attain the height you want to attain. Starts on the inside. The beautiful thing is that whatever is on the inside of you will come up. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That prof, that's just words. No. The Bible says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips as you speak it. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Are you with me tonight? So the more whatever is in your heart, eventually you become it. That's what some folk now call law of attraction. and They put all kind of names on it. Scripture says in, uh, in Mark eleven twenty four, Whatsoever ye desire, when you pray, believe. Where do you desire stuff? Hallelujah. I pray that we begin to desire to be like Christ. You, you know what that means? That means you're about to be filled with so much love. You're about to be filled with so much compassion. You're about to, your bank account is about to fill with so much money to pay every bill that you have. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Yeah. Jesus was never broke. When they came to him once and he owed some bills, he told young man, young man Peter, what skill do you have? He said, I've got skills to fish. He said, go catch you a fish. That's when I do my miracle. Go use your skill. Go use your skill. That's a message for another day. Use your gift. Use your skill. When the time is right. So he says, go use your skill. Catch you a fish. He caught that fish, opened the mouth of the fish, voila, all kinds of minerals. Jesus says, yeah, there you go. Go sell it, pay the bills, and let's keep it moving. I didn't come here to do this money business. I'm after something bigger. My daddy owns it all. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So he says, you are chosen race. You are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, a a nation, a dedicated nation, God's own purchase, special people that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display. Someone say virtues. The virtues and perfection of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Light. That means we have work to do. We've got a lot. We, we have to display his virtues and his deeds. So Paul and Timotheus in their letter to the church in Colossae, they said, clothe yourselves in verse 12. Therefore, as God's own chosen ones, the ones that he picked 
representatives that he picked with his own hands. Say, God picked me. Yeah. Say, God chose me. I didn't choose myself. Say, he chose me because he has purpose for me. Yeah. If you hired someone to work for you, would you expect them to come to you and tell you what they want to do at work? No. In fact, you, during the interview process, you may tell them what they're going to do. Or during orientation, you tell them what they're going to do. I didn't call myself. So if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. Am I in your Bible tonight? Are you with me? Yeah. So, but unfortunately, many believers, we come to Christ and we begin to take our lives into our own hands. God opens a small door. And then we go in there, see what's in that door. And we begin to think, oh, wow, I can do this. I can do that. Oh, I see a couch. Maybe I can bring in this. Oh, it's missing that. Oh, let me bring in this. Let me. So now you go into this small room that the Lord has given you the opportunity to see. And you begin to build a life and your entire mission based on that small room. And God is saying, I have big plans as far as the heavens are from the earth. So are your ways and your thoughts far from mine. So don't depart from me. Don't grab that one door, one miracle, one job, that one opportunity. Don't let it distract you from serving me. Hold on. Don't, let, don't go into that door and see people and see what they do and say, I'm going to do what they do too because I want to match up to their level. Say, I'm different. I'm on a different assignment. Yeah. All right. So, so we, our focus is very needed. He handpicked us. We are, we, the scripture says his own picked representatives. His own picked representatives who are pure and holy and well beloved by God himself. By putting on behavior marked by tender hearted pity. Is that right? My, so I want you, so Paul and Timotheus is saying, guys, this is to the whole church, okay? Because when you read chapter 4, Paul, Timotheus, they say to the church, I want you to read this one, this letter to yourselves and also read it to the entire church. When you are done, he says, I want you to send this letter to, uh, is it Macedonia? Yeah. Let me get the name of that church. I want, you, uh, I want you to read this letter to everybody in this church. All right? And then also, I want you to read this letter. Get this letter to uh, the Laodicean church. And read this letter, epistle, to the entire Laodicean church. So this is not something for a group, a small group of people. This is for the entire church. So it's mine. Yeah, the book of Colossians is my book. Yeah. So he says, I want you, he says, uh, now, now, as God's own, God's clothe, God's own, I want you to clothe yourself as God's own chosen representative. I want you to uh, clothe yourself. You pure, you holy, well beloved by God himself. Now how do you clothe yourself? I want you to clothe yourself by putting on the behavior marked or putting on behavior marked by tender hearted pity. Not just pity. Tender hearted pity. Marked by mercy. Someone say mercy. So if you're a believer, one of the ways that we know you are a believer is that is by the measure of mercy that you carry. 
Yeah. It's by the measure of mercy that you carry. Are you merciful enough? Is the question. Am I merciful enough? You want to ask yourself. Now, these are real stuff. Say, there's real talk. Yeah. This real stuff. Those of you online, declare it. This real talk. Type in the comments box. This real talk. Okay? So, you, we busy praying to God for stuff. And for someone, you may have received, you may have received one answer and not the other. Or for others, it may seem as though the heavens may even be shut over your life. Tonight, you are understanding that maybe it's because you lack mercy. Scripture says, blessed are the merciful. That's Matthew 5, isn't it? For they shall obtain mercy. So it stands to reason, as much as we say and we read that the mercy of God is renewed daily, if I have to obtain mercy by reason of the measure of mercy that I give, it stands to reason that there is a level of mercy that I may not attain or be able to attain from God if I'm not merciful. So you don't want to go about life being all uh, strict, mean, unmerciful, rude, unkind, fill it so much. You don't go through life like that, expecting God to be merciful. Are you with me? Um, if you are a Christian or a believer, in any business meeting or any business transaction, you should be seen as a believer. Something got to shine. Something got to show. Because scripture says in First Peter that look, you have a mandate. You have to show forth the deeds and the virtues of Christ Jesus. The wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfection of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who called? Jesus. Say, I have work to do. Yeah. All right. Now, looking at what is, if you focus on what is ahead of you, what is in front of you, scripture refers to that as keeping your eye to the ground. If you keep your eye, if you keep your eye amplified, if you keep your eye to the ground constantly, you, you will not be able to live by faith or apply faith to your Christian walk. You would be one who lives by sight. But as believers, we live by faith and not by sight. It also stands to reason that if I'm looking at that person who's hurt me, if I'm looking at all the things they've done, and if, if I carefully consider all the things that they've done, mercy will be out of the picture. In no way will this soldier boy show you mercy for those crazy things you've been doing or you do against him. Are you with me? But when I remember Christ, his suffering, how that even me, say me. <laughs> remember, just look, remember your life. You, know. you were not born, born again. You lived life and uh, eventually you became born again. Remember the things you used to do. Some of you were thieves. Yeah. Some of you were criminals. Huh? Yeah. Some of you were uh, different. Some of the ladies went to sleep on Friday in one city and they don't even know how they ended up on Saturday in a different city, different bed. Yeah. So even you, Christ saved you. Some were selling drugs. Many people got arrested. 
And the only reason you didn't get arrested was maybe because God showed you mercy. Say, even me. Yeah. You did some crazy, risky stuff. He saved you and uh, and today you're here. And some with a lot of complaints. Lord, you're not blessing me enough. Lord, Lord. How about those you left behind? How about those who died? How about the friends you had who, who, who got shot? Doing the same thing that you did. Yeah. I remember people who went to war. We all went. But some didn't come back. In fact, some did, but they came in caskets. Yeah. Some, we all went. Some came back with just one leg. Yeah. Do you have two legs? Two hands? You are blessed. Live for Christ. Hallelujah. Let's live for him. And you know, living for Christ is a beautiful thing, you know. It's a good project. I'm not saying quit your job, go stand in the streets and proclaim Christ is coming. I'm not saying that. I'm saying from right where you are, let's begin to practice these things. And trust me, we may not go through it all tonight, but we'll finish it. We're going to go through each word that Paul wrote to the church. So he says, I want you to put on this behavior. What behavior? He says, this behavior is marked by some qualities. And the first set of qualities we find, he says, tender-hearted pity and mercy. Now, having been merciful does not necessarily mean that you go back to the wrong people all the time. Right? Being merciful means forgive them, learn wisdom out of what they, they may have done to you, apply it to your now, and look to Christ. Help them if you can, but don't you go back saying, all right, does it make sense? Does it make sense? Say, Lord, Lord, help me to be more merciful. Yeah. Because truth is, um, God, the Bible says, God repented that he created men. Don't laugh. A wise Jewish man once said, if God had a house here on earth, man will break the windows of God, God's window. Man will break into it. Can you imagine? God is, imagine God, God, God here on earth. 101 Main Street. And that's God's house, God's mansion. At night, you will find men trying to break into God's house. That's how wicked the heart of man is. So God, scripture says, God repented for creating man. That's different. That's different. Have you ever helped anyone and you know you did them real good, but yet they turn around and hurt you like real good? <laughs> like they do you real good. You did them good, they do you good back in a bad way. Right? It happens. And what goes through your mind? There are some times you just cannot understand why this person would do this thing like what's going on in their head and if you spend waste a lot of time trying to understand why people do what they do you'll be stuck with them right you'll be stuck with trying to understand what they did to you so let mercy be a part of your watchword they do it to you mercy mercy it may hurt. You may talk about it. Once, twice, mercy. Thrice, mercy. It may hurt, mercy. The more they hurt you, 
mercy, 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 mercy. Can I give you a practical lesson in life? If you're one who gets hurt a lot and you keep showing mercy a lot, it is often I've come to realize that it could often be that a day is going to come in your life where you will need so much mercy from God. So much mercy. So you're being tested for the mercy that you need days ahead and years ahead. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Or maybe God is looking for someone that he can entrust a big project to. So he allows people to hurt you and hurt you and hurt you to see how much you can handle, how much mercy you can give and show. Yeah. So they had a conversation with Jesus once. He said, but Lord, how many times do I have to forgive? Seven? He said, nah. Seven? Times how many? There you go. Yeah. In one day? Yes, Lord. Say, Lord, help me. Yeah. So mercy is a, is, a, is a powerful thing. And the more you show mercy, the more foolish you look in the eyes of men, people. But it is only the wise who show mercy. Only wise. Only the wise. Only the wise. The son of Solomon was not wise enough. He missed it. He, in fact, he had a lot of wise men that his father used to consult. But this guy was not wise enough to listen to the advice of these wise men. So when the people of the land came in to him, the expats, they came to him and said, Sir, Solomon, your father, was a good man. We love that man. He was trying to build a temple, the house of God. As a result of that, he increased taxes. We were okay with it because it's for God. Now the temple is built. Solomon is dead. Please have mercy on us. Reduce our taxes. And we promise we'll serve you forever. His son the new king, Solomon's son, consults the wise men of the land. The wise men said, yeah, we've been with your father all these years. What these guys are saying is true. Besides, they outnumber us. You got to listen to them. Listen to them. Reduce their taxes. Else, something will happen. He said, okay. And then he went to his friends. And then had a conversation with his friends. Say, guys, homeboys, homegirls, buddies, what to do? These guys want us to reduce their burden, their taxes. And then the young man said to him, if you, in fact, don't reduce their taxes, but rather go back to them and tell them, you're about to increase it even more. We need more money, more money, more money. <laughs> yeah. So because this guy was not wise enough, he, he didn't have access to mercy. He didn't show the people mercy. He told them what their friends said and not what the wise men said. The wise men said, show them mercy. So I say mercy. Yeah. Show them mercy. It's not going to take anything away from you. They will serve you forever. If you're taking notes, you may want to write this down. Mercy brings longevity. Mercy brings longevity. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That means I will live to obtain that mercy. If the son of Solomon was merciful enough, he would have kept all the people and all the tribes. 
and saints, because he was not merciful and therefore wise, he lost all tribes with the exception of one. He lost 11 tribes with the exception of one. Just like that. So why are you busy holding on to things? Why are you busy filling your heart with unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, uh, rage, and all of that, and not showing mercy? God may be saying to you, like Solomon's son, if you not if you don't wise up and show mercy, you may lose some good things in your life. Someone say mercy. Often we think of mercy. Whenever we think of mercy, we, look, we think of the big man having mercy on the small man. Or the big man having mercy on the small woman. The boss showing mercy on the subordinate. Right? The leader showing mercy on the subordinate. But let's look at mercy in the reverse way. The subordinate showing mercy on the leader. The assistant showing mercy on the supervisor. The director showing mercy on the CEO. Are you with me? Many, in fact, before you become a leader called and chosen by God, I believe that you would have qualified, the, uh, you would have passed the test of mercy for you to be sustained as a leader. I believe that you would have passed, you know, test of mercy at least at the certain stage yeah you ought to you cannot you cannot be a pastor if you, you if you're not merciful you you cannot be a successful pastor if you're not merciful you shoot guns <laughs> uh, you can't reach out and say i'm tired <laughs> may that never be our story yeah yeah you cannot be a church leader if you don't a good Long, lasting church leader if you are not merciful you must be merciful now how about being a church member let us learn mercy yeah May, ch- church members need to now begin to be merciful to us their auxiliary leaders the fact that they forgot your birthday does not mean that God is telling you to um Go to a different place. Or God is telling you, okay, um, take a sabbatical away from church for the next few weeks or one month without any, um, any thank you, without any contact. Are you with me? The, the fact that someone offended you in the church does not mean, you know, God says take this week off. Maybe that is the week that the angels really were going to visit you with the answer that you need in the church. But you missed it. Yeah. Someone said, but the angels could have come to my house. (laughs) The angel that Jacob wrestled with had to meet Jacob where he met Jacob. For as long as... Let me not even go there. Yeah. We did benefits of church why we must come to church. You remember? Yeah. And you realize that God meets his people at specific places. Yeah. So you cannot be a church all by yourself. My body is a temple of Holy Ghost. Not a temple of, not a church. That's why we need to come together. So when we come together, we are like dunamis. Holy Ghost in you, Holy Ghost in me, Holy Ghost in us. So when we sing, we worship God. When we pray, we pray together. His power falls. Bam! That's where you get healed. That's where you get delivered. Stay home and get, deliver yourself. Yeah. Yeah. The best place to be when you are offended is his presence. But we are taught different. The enemy tells you, if you are offended, excuse yourself. For some time. Oh, the devil is a liar. Somebody say mercy. So, we have to learn mercy. Now, even as you're hearing this today, don't be surprised if you get tempted in the area of mercy. Tomorrow, tonight. That's where the real work starts. All your prayers are in vain. 
if you have no mercy in you. Jesus says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Love. Huh? You, can, you can't be merciful if you have no love in you. And we'll get there. It's one of the traits. We'll get there. Not tonight though. Don't worry. We're getting ready to close. All right? So let's work on, let's look at mercy in a reverse action. My daddy was not there for me. I didn't, I don't, I don't even know him. He never cared for me. Um, daddy or mommy wasn't there. Daddy hurt mommy so bad. How you know? Because mommy told you a bunch of stories. Or mommy hurt daddy so bad. How you know? Because daddy told you a bunch of stories. And as a result of that, I don't want nothing to do with that man or that woman, that father of mine. Maybe that's your cross to carry, dear believer. Maybe that's your cross to carry. To be able to go back to that daddy who wasn't there. Show him mercy. Because the truth is, you becoming like that daddy. You are. In fact, the enemy wants you to be like him. The enemy wants you to be like that mommy that you refuse to show mercy to. On. Yeah. I wish I had time to break this down or explain it. Yeah. When people act evil towards you and you retaliate to them as good as you are, Eventually, if you stay in their presence for too long, scripture says, bad company corrupts good character. If you stay in that company for too long, they throw one punch, you throw one back. Yours may not be as powerful as them, but you throw it back. Anyways, eventually, who do you become? As evil as they are. Anytime you hold things, you refuse to show mercy. And you stay in the presence of that mess. Eventually, you also you become like that mess. Huh? Is it clear enough? Simple enough to understand? Yeah. Simple. That is why the enemy does things to keep you in bondage. In a bondage of unforgiveness. In a bondage, in a bondage of unforgiveness. And all kind of stuff. So you refuse to show mercy. Say mercy, Lord. You, I know you just, you cannot afford to think of why you must forgive this guy after all he's done. This woman, after all she's done. Or that father, that mother, after all they've done. Think of you, your life. How much time the Lord has forgiven you. And let's be like Christ. Let's desire to be like Christ. Else all our shababa, karaba, all of that is useless. It's useless. It's in vain. Paul says, all of that is in vain. If you have no love, it's in vain. So let's go out there for the rest of the week. Let people see us and see Christ in us. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 once upon a time, a lady, I shared this here before, uh, a lady in the office called me once in a way that I didn't really like. She said, Polo. I said, what? She said, don't you see what they've been doing and saying about you and to you? I said, huh? She said, stop acting like you don't know. I said, what? He said, they being, they're not treating you right. They're not, they're not treating you right. They don't talk to you well. They don't talk well about you. And when you're not here, they keep saying all these things about you. When would you say something back? Right? And of course, that was the military, right? And in the military, you know, all I, all I, all I had to do was just write an email or, or just something little and they all get in trouble. Because I had a lot of proof. But I just smiled. And I said, don't worry. Don't worry. She never, she didn't understand but eventually she became a friend and she started practicing the mercy that she saw me show others. All the people who were acting the way they were acting eventually changed. They became my real good buddies. And when we had events, sometimes 
They'll say, I, I never, I, I never, I didn't say too much. I didn't, I didn't preach Jesus to no one. I, but one, I, I, I was shocked one day. We were having a, an event. They said, okay, let's have a uh, photo pray for us. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, and then it was on and on and on, you know. It started in the office. In the office. What would you do when those in the office maybe rise up against you, say all kind of stuff about you? Now, it's not easy. You need Christ in you. You need his word in you. It has to be an inward thing. You feel me? God wants this thing to be uh, inside of you. Let it be engraved in your heart, in your life. And eventually, you begin to radiate that light. That is when scripture says... Let your light shine forth. At that time, every act of yours will be light. Light. Let your light shine forth before men so that when they see your works, your acts, they will give glory to God, your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. We're going to pause here. We'll continue. And I'm, I'm committed to uh, working this out so we can Become true disciples of Jesus. So let's learn to forgive. Children, forgive your parents. Show them mercy. Forgive your subordinates. Are you with me? Yeah. As a leader, you're already expected to be full of mercy anyways. <laughs> Else you may not last. Right? So, more grace to you leaders. But, for everybody else, Show mercy. The mercy you show today will be shown to you in the future. You may not be the greatest leader today. You may not be the highest ranking person today. But very soon, you will become it. You will grow in leadership. And when you get there, you will need people to forgive you because you forgot their birthday. You need people to forgive you because uh, you did not text them back or call them back or did not pick their phone call. Petty stuff that adults get mad over today. Right? They will show you mercy when your time comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us rise to our feet. Everyone at home. Let's, tonight our prayer is simple. We are praying for the mercy of God. We are praying that the Lord will show us mercy. And fill us with his mercy. In the name of Jesus. You are not here. You are not physically here. You are at home. You are driving at work. But there is no distance in the spirit. So I want, to, I want us to pray together. Scripture says that because these people is one. Nothing will be restrained from them. That they have imagined to do. Tonight we have imagined one thing. The mercy of God. Lord make me a merciful person. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice. Begin to pray. Pray that the Lord will make you a merciful person. In the name of Jesus. Pray that the Lord will fill you with his mercy. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord show us mercy. Lord fill us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus. I want to be a merciful one. Like as Christ was merciful. So do I want to be merciful. In the name of Jesus. I want to walk in your mercy. I want to walk in your mercy. Oh Father show us mercy. Lord cause us to become agents of your mercy. Come on lift your voice and pray. Pray for his mercy. Ay, 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 but that. Da, da, da. Pray for the mercy of God. Pray for the mercy of God. Pray for the mercy of God. Pray for his mercy. Pray for his mercy. Pray for his mercy. Lord, make me a vessel of mercy. Lord, make me a vessel of mercy. In the name of Jesus, make me a vessel of mercy. Oh, Lord, make us vessels of mercy. In the name of Jesus, make us vessels of mercy. Yes, Lord. I don't want my prayers to be meaningless. So help me. Make me a person of mercy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, Lord. A person of mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. We need your mercy. Oftentimes we think highly of ourselves. We think we are too big, too good to forgive, too good to show mercy to others. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for all the days we have refused to show mercy. Forgive us, Lord. For all the days we have, we have refused to show people pity. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, we need your help tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we pray tonight that you fill us tonight with your mercy. Make us tanks, vessels of your mercy. In the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh Father, that by your mercy, anything that stands in the way that limits us will be removed. As we show mercy, let heaven show us mercy. In the name of Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that as we show more mercy, that you unveil to us your true purpose for our life. In the name of Jesus, tonight we've come to understand that mercy can be a limiter it can limit us in many ways and so tonight by us praying this prayer and deciding to show more mercy let every limitation be removed in the name of jesus it is my prayer oh lord that you help us indeed become the best of who you've called us to become we desire to be like you christ so help us in mercy we want to be like you in love we want to be like you in the name of jesus we thank you lord that through mercy we will not be selfish that through mercy and 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 and, and through mercy and tender-hearted pity we will no longer be selfish but rather we'll care for one another we we'll begin to treat each other like we want to be treated. We we'll begin to love each other well. In the name of Jesus. We we'll begin to put ourselves in each other's shoes. Lead us in the shoes of subordinates. And subordinates in the shoes of leaders. In the name of Jesus. That father. People will see us. And know that we are true disciples. Of Jesus Christ. We thank you tonight. We give you the glory. We praise your holy name. In Jesus mighty name. We pray. Amen. We do thank God tonight. Father we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God. Amen. I will do you a great. Uh, uh, disservice. If we did not. Do offering. Tonight. So let's lift up your offering. And begin to pray over it. Lift up your offering. Begin to pray over it. If you are giving online, there are several ways you can do so. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. Let's lift it up. Lift it up. Let's pray over it. Father, we thank you tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Pour out your blessing upon us. Open the heavens over our life. Change our story. Bless us indeed make us true representatives of christ christ did not die before his time therefore by reason of our offering and prayer may we not die before our time may our family members not die before their time christ was merciful by reason of our offering and prayer increase us in mercy christ was loving he was kind wherever he went he was doing good therefore by that reason help us do good Christ was able to feed 5,000 men not counting women and children by reason of our offering and prayer tonight and desire to be like Christ empower us to be able to feed the poor in the name of Jesus we thank you we give you the glory 
we give you the praise in Jesus name amen let us serve the people of God hallelujah hallelujah those of you online are you excited to be a part of tonight's session I'm going to I'm going to be reading the comments so I'm seeing who's excited and who's not hallelujah I pray that after tonight you will be full of mercy in the name of Jesus your life will be filled with mercy so much mercy mercy for God in Jesus name amen all right I'm excited okay let's keep serving the people of God but I'm excited about the prayer and worship experience it is going to be very powerful four days four days of power pack um, prayer worship teaching uh, call it workshops uh, love barbecue I I thought you like food okay fasting fasting <laughs> wow it'll be so good don't miss it at all all right so it starts on the 30th from the 30th to the uh 30th of june to the 3rd of july it's going to be so good the 30th of june to the 3rd of july it's going to be so good it's the, the weekend of the 4th of july 4th of july is monday so you have no reason uh not to show up so those of you partners friends loved ones of course seating is limited so go online register for free okay register for free reserve your seat and uh, it's going to be really good here all right the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord cause his face shine upon you in the name of jesus someone say i am blessed say i'm highly favored say no weapon formed against me shall prosper See every tongue that rises up against my life is hereby condemned. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare I am too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. Say I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to cry. Say and here is the reason why. I have a God who loves me. I have a God who calls me his own. Say, so though all things may change, my God remains the same. Say, so he's promised to be with me as I go through this life. Say, so his name is Jesus and I am on his team. He's fought the fight. He's won the battle and he's given me the victory. That is why I'm so confident that for the rest of this week and beyond I will be victorious in everything that I do and go through in Jesus name Amen God bless you so much I love you believe in God for the best for your life make sure you love on someone on your way 